So I have a question. Who's your favorite? This is also a little bit of the grown-up test. Who's your favorite flautist? Well, I only know of one flautist, so he's my favorite. And you're over 50 if you know who that is. Right. Yes. And I can name this tune in six notes. Ba 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 ba. Exactly. Do you know that there's an app now for Name That Tune? I downloaded it. I probably won't play it because I like that blend game where you do the color theory thing I did sophomore year in design school. But the point is, we always want to do things faster. You know, we want to do things, we want to name that tune in three notes, and especially we want to, in the name of performance, style that site and get our style sheets shorter. I can style that site in three breakpoints, in four breakpoints, right? And that's the power of grid. If the rest of our styles are clean, you know, if we haven't like goosed something with, you know, a little padding here and a little margin here and stuff, if we keep it really clean, we can get our style sheets like down to half the size. We really can do it in two or three breakpoints uh, per like thing we want to style. Like, you know, the, the posts and the pages and the products. By the way, that's as far as my knowledge of taxonomy goes. You know, custom post types, uh, I don't even know what that is. You know, I, I accept posts, pages, products, and real estate listings. Other than that, it's a post and it gets a category. That's what I have the, like, headspace for. But anyway. So here's a photography portfolio I threw up. I swore I wasn't going to say throw up, <laughs> you know, that I threw together on my personal site last fall. Wouldn't you know, I just realized I need a WordCamps category because I have some shots from some St. Louis WordCamps. I took a few pictures here. But anyway, now this is a Genesis child theme. Everything I do is a Genesis child theme. And, unless it's something I put in the oven on pure convection, or it's a backhand volley. Um, and this is the phone view. And seriously, that styles it. And I don't know why I decided to have three different grid, or four is it, widget areas, you know, Oh my goodness, I better put on all those widget areas now so I don't have to come back and open that PHP file, you know, climb the mountain in the snow. It's in a tab. If I need another one, I can add it some other time. But at any rate, you can see that all that column of pictures is just display grid, grid template columns, one fraction. Isn't it great we can finally measure things without knowing how wide they are? One fraction, that's all of it. Here's the tablet layout. Or somewhat wider. Because the truth is, we, there are like, there used to be eight million stories in the naked city, now there's eight million screen sizes. And that's just on Amazon's you know, deal of the day page, you know? So I call it tablet, I call it phone, I call it laptop. For all I know, it's the jumbotron at your local basketball stadium. Or it's a watch. But anyway, so here's the code for that. You know, I mean, the grid part. Three lines. And again, the fraction. 
That's a new unit. It's called the fraction. It's my second favorite. My first favorite is the new unit called the uh, viewport width unit, the VW. And I do things in terms of the VW because unlike the VH, you know, we don't usually know how high something is. And often when we're working in the browser, how many of you are designers? And we all write CSS, of course, and a little PHP. Yes? Or not? How many of you never heard the term CSS? Oh, good. We're among friends. And how many of you do like a full comp in Photoshop or Sketch or Affinity or something, and then you like write the styles and you discover something that you had in your lab that you really loved and it's not exactly translating into the CSS properly and something's like way over there that should have been here. Anybody ever had that experience? Bef you know, how many of you had that experience this week? <laughs> yeah. So the fraction, you know, can be anything. The VW is great, especially on these narrower views, because that's like smaller and it's maybe not going to mess up on you. Also, I have the concept of these little, like, cars as the measurement units. Oh, that's three bugs across. But anyway, we, so there's a laptop view. Now we have one fraction. And you can do it this way, or you can do it with some repeat notation, etc. And I think it's time to pay some dues. We are here today for exactly two reasons. And we would not be here at all without them. Jen Simmons and Rachel Andrew, they've been working on teaching us this stuff. And Jen, I think, has been advocating for getting it supported for longer than that. But they've been working on teaching this stuff for like two years. Everything you read, even the stuff on uh, CSS tricks, um, I'm a huge fan of Chris Coyer, you know, everything started with them. In fact, when I was doing demos for this and some other work in the last couple of weeks, I had Rachel Andrews' demos open the whole time in three tabs. I finally put it in another window just so I could get to it faster. A little taste of Jen Simmons started her website, and that will lead you to her labs. She's also got a whole list of stuff. Seriously, you could read for six weeks between the two of them. And this I absolutely have had open for a month. And that's what and so much more means. So grid, what is it? Where do we use it? Does it work with Flexbox? Yes. How do we get started? So first, what is it? Here's what it's not. It's not a plugin. It's not a framework. It's not a page builder. And it's not a panacea much. It's a CSS specification. That's the technical term. Flexbox, by the way, isn't any of those things, and it's also not a CSS specification. It's the flexible box module. I guess that's because you can read it, I haven't, uh, in you know, six fewer hours. So where do we use it? Um, Flexbox. If you're familiar with it, helps us do things in one dimension. Grid works for grids of posts, which largely happen in two dimensions. That first phone view notwithstanding. We can use it instead of Flexbox, instead of floats, goodbye foundation, instead of block and inline block, instead of display table. Uh, what's display table for? 
Does anybody even know? I mean, is that, was that just like to help people get over table layouts? So instead of Flexbox, I just redid this grid. This was a Flexbox uh, row wrap deal. Just did that. Yes, I did have Rachel Andrews' thing open the whole time. Another grid that we can now use grid for instead of Flexbox. And another one. Yes, I do do a lot of tennis stuff, don't I? We can also use them along with most of those things, which is wonderful. So, I will take a leaf from our high school teacher guy yesterday who was terrific. I thought, didn't he do a great job? Yeah. And make sure we're, we're all tracking along. Questions at this point on what it is, what it's not? Are we asleep, awake? I don't think I have a joke for this part. Oh, yes, I do. Well, a little acknowledgment. Thank you, Foundation. You taught me some great PHP. That's how I learned to manipulate the loop. And this is still in Foundation, and I will refactor it in grid shortly after we take the cats in. That was our vet. So you can also use grid inside a post. In this photography site, I purposely did not use any of those gallery plugins like are you familiar with Next Gen Gallery? Hands. Foo Gallery, which is free. And then there's all those light boxes. I think we maybe don't need those quite as much anymore unless you want to be sophisticated. So at the top, my favorite image from, we drove back from California to St. Louis in September. And I just love the way that, um, those rocks live in space. And uh, I, use, I use backspread. I use backstretch. Don't ever get a dry mouth. Um, one of the few jQuery scripts I care about um, with grid and grid to organize the shots right in the post. There's the code. One fraction. Overflow visible, I don't know why I care. Again, two fractions. Three fractions. And yes, you can mix units. We're gonna live dangerously here. We're actually going to look at that code pen thing. Unless, of course, we're not. Oh, I guess I'm supposed to. Tell me when you see the cursor. Oh, there it is. Okay, we can all see this. The CSS part on the left. Oh, oh, I guess I want to switch to mirroring right now. Hang on a second. This is a bad idea, I think. But anyway, the point is, you any. Let's go back to the real thing. There we are. Imagine, if you will, that you have one of those 1FR, 1FR, 1FRs thing. You can actually do 1FR, 300 pixels, and auto. And it'll just go. And then there's other notation you can use that will say, 
Okay, I want it to start over in column one, end in column three, and yeah, it's perfectly fine that the column that E is in is 200 pixels wide and 200 pixels long. And I encourage you to go to codepen.com and with some of Rachel's examples and, uh, and play with it. And because it's hard for me to understand, we don't want to take that much time, but it's absolutely the best thing you can do to learn about this stuff. And if you have children, they'll probably come up to your screen and say, what are you doing? And give you that look that they give you. Uh, if you are parents, I have good news for you. At about 25, they start to say these new vocabulary words like, thank you. And are you sure you don't mind? It's fabulous. Cannot recommend it enough. 25, 23, those are the cutest, 22 in our son's case, those are the cutest ages ever. Love them to death. So does it work with Flexbox? Gorgeously. Flexbox, I think, was born for navigation. Also phone views. Uh, and then you, you, if you're building mobile first, start with a phone view in, in Flexbox and then in the next break point or two up, switch to grid when it seems appropriate. You know, Chris Coyer, whom I mentioned before, um, he's a new father. He wants to strap the baby to the Roomba and w win money for videos. He tweeted that, so I'm not saying anything out of school. Um, but as he puts it, the phone is just a long tube of content. What's perfect for one dimension? Flexbox. Two dimensions, grid. If you take away nothing else from today, it's that. One dimension, Flexbox. So your primary nav, your phone view, two dimensions, grid. Three dimensions, I don't know. I know that Final Cut Pro just upgraded to some 360 video editing and we'd have to get like our phones in four years maybe with the 360 video and maybe then you guys tell me. Navigation, that's Flexbox. Row wrap, wouldn't necessarily have to wrap, probably better if it doesn't. You know all those themes where, well, you know all the times where you'd really like to center the logo in between like three top level links over here and three top level links over there? You know why we never saw that in a theme store before like a year ago? It was hard to do with floats. You know, you prime, and you know, and filters and hooks out the wazoo, moved the primary navigation over here, and this became the sub-navigation. And to keep it centered, and to keep the left on the right left, and the right on the right, that was a pain in the butt. And by the way, I'm not being inappropriate. I mean the pork butt. Our son is in the barbecue business. Of course, the elephant in the room about any new CSS thing, browser support for grid, totally. Does anybody in here use Opera Mini? on their phone? <laughs> Do you know anybody who uses Opera Mini? I don't either. So, you know, I'm, I don't, I want to be inclusive and say, you know, wonderful, you know, if they do, but uh, I don't think it's a big problem. Bessie. What are you doing here still? <coughs> She's back. Another problem with grid, something to watch out for. I hate to end on a downer. 
There's this thing called the implicit grid. How many of you have ever done anything with grid or played with it at all today? I mean, before today. Uh, you know those grids we defined in all those views? That's just a suggestion. CSS and the browsers, if you add things, they will add things. And that's what we call the implicit grid. So if I go back to like that tablet view, but then for some unknown reason that I did a lot in the last couple of months, decide that one of those nicely lined up squares needed to have a position that I specified and I decided that that one needed to be in column one or in column five, suddenly we'd start to see holes and we'd see five columns here. That's the implicit grid. If I decide to put one of them in row four, there's going to be a row four because the grid isn't final until you've placed all your items. So be aware of that, which is one reason you should really play a lot on code pen, is so that you can make Bessie happy and she'll go back outside to the jungle. Because otherwise, Bessie has some news for you. Also, Bessie wants to remind us not to do that to our elements as much as possible. You know, don't fix things with margin and padding. Don't fix things by, you know, deciding that this has to be in a particular place. For the most part, define your grid, let things fall, and then, if something's in the wrong place or something needs to be in a specific place, then start tweaking. But let things be automatic first. And then Bessie will be happy. She might even give you a peanut. I'm Mary Baum. I make stuff for tennis people. And I live on Twitter at Mary Baum. Thank you very much. <laughs> Questions? Yeah. Flexbox is also a CSS specification, and I will teach you Flexbox right now. Display flex, and you look at, and if it's working, all the elements that you are in the children of what you just declared that on will line up horizontally and squish all together. And then there are two ways to sort that mess out. Justify content goes in that direction if you want everything in a row. And that's basically flex start, flex end, but mostly you'll use space between. And you don't say anything about that. If you want them going the other way, then you go flex flow column. And then if you want them left aligned, say align, flex, align items, flex start, Align items center, align items flex end for the right side, and align items stretch if you want them justified. And if you think you want them to wrap into more than one rows, switch to grid. There you go. You mean like floats and stuff? Yeah. Well, no, you're dealing with divs the whole time. Everything is a div. Um, you know, be careful of making, you know, have, have as few divs as you can. 
and decide where you're going to do your margins and padding. I, I would recommend doing them on the big boxes, but then sometimes I decide, no, you shouldn't do them on the big boxes, you should do them on the little things. But, but I think pad, padding versus margins, pad the big boxes, and then leave the margins for the little boxes, sort of at the very end of each, of each size when you're tweaking. Do you largely use grid now for your layout, or, is, or are you finding yourself using a combination of flexbox and grid? Combination of flexbox and grid. Um, and, but I'm gradually getting rid of the floats, and I'll tell you why. Floats actually have a really legitimate use, especially for those of us who come from print. Sometimes you want to pull an image or a graphic out of some copy and wrap text around it. That's what flex is, that's what floats are for. And possibly someday, the Mozilla Foundation is going to see fit for Firefox to wrap text around a shape that is not a rectangle. And at that point, floats are going to be a little important. Until then, we can in many ways ignore them unless we want to really, you know, unless we really want to get fancy with pulling like a rectangular photograph halfway out of the column and wrapping. And that's, that it can be kind of tricky. I was messing with that a lot when I should have been doing something else. <laughs> Anything else? Or should I say what else? Oh, Rachel also tweeted out a great cheat sheet on, totally on, like when you say a line, when you say justify, when you say stretch, that goes across flexbox and grid and multi-column. you know what that, where that is? I would just go to her Twitter. Yeah, yeah. I would search on her in Twitter. She tweeted, and then it'll be sort of near the top of her feed. Um, this might be what you were trying to tell me all along, but uh, I, I can pretty much delete my bootstrap now. Is that correct? Yeah. Bootstrap, foundation. I know that foundation has just released a new vert, except Probably you need, I have not been doing a lot of email marketing um, lately, so you can pelt me with whatever you want to and say, shame, shame. But I think foundation for email is probably relevant because emails, I would say, I was about to say that email's like never going to adopt this stuff, but of course it is in about five years when it's all obsolete. Um, that was a joke. <laughs> sad, though. <laughs> some, of, some jokes are true. Uh, uh, but yeah. Yeah, Bootstrap Foundation. I, I don't know if you were in the habit of, as I was, like rewriting a bunch of foundation stuff so that it would look the way I wanted it to look. But also, you know, no more rewriting the loop. Did I explain to you guys that this is a Genesis theme? Oh, and I never got to the point of like that thing where it's either a Genesis theme or pasta or a backhand volley. But you can do this, to you can totally do this with like underscores or anything else you're using. I'm only partly a shill for the studio press. Okay, it's three o'clock, so there's time for one more question. Okay. And they don't even know I'm a shill for them. Oh. <laughs> well, thank you so much. <laughs>